Christine, I appreciate your time. An eventful day for folks here along the East Coast. Not every day we experience an earthquake here. Walk folks through what we experienced firsthand just after 10 o'clock Friday morning. Well, uh, around 10 o'clock this morning uh, in in New Jersey, there was an earthquake, a magnitude 4.8 uh, that occurred, and a lot of people were literally shaken up by it. And we've received a lot of media response. People are curious about this event and how it can relate to uh, past and future events in the area. Talk about kind of where this occurred, and you say that it's significant when something like this happens east of, say, the Rockies, that, that it's experienced differently by folks. Yes, because the, the crust is different in the east and, and it doesn't attenuate or, or diminish the waves as much as it does on the west coast when we have a 4.8. So it's a fairly small earthquake uh, to by any standards uh, for us, but people will feel the shaking a little bit stronger and at farther distances than they do in California. Uh, because of the composition of the crust, it's kind of like having uh, the wave propagating through something very stiff and hard that propagates all the waves versus in a sponge that kind of eats up the waves as they travel. Our viewers, some asking if this happened along the Ramapo fault line. A, is that accurate? And B, what are the chances we may see something like this, of this significance in this region, you know, in the future moving forward? So I think that the, the key point I try to make on all these, these post-earthquake responses is that earthquakes are expected anywhere in the world at any time. And, and uh, there's different uh, probabilities, and so they're more rare in the east than in California. That's because of the tectonic setting. But a small earthquake like this is not unusual, although it's, it may be rare at our human time scale uh, for the East Coast, but it's earthquakes happen all the time uh, throughout uh, the world. And if you go look at earthquakes.usgs.gov and look at the map of earthquakes throughout the world in, in even a single day, you'll see there's a lot of them. And, and for me, when an earthquake happens, it's a reminder to prepare, to know what to do when it happens. You feel shaking, you drop cover and hold on. If, uh, and and you, you get ready for, for potential uh, aftershocks, which can happen. And I guess to that point, our chief meteorologist, Rachel Frank, has this great ability to connect directly with her audience. And she is being asked about that, the potential for aftershocks in a place like Connecticut. What is the likelihood of that potential? So it varies by region. Usually when there's an earthquake, it shows us that there's been stress in the crust in that area. And the, uh, the fact that there's an earthquake and can trigger other ones. So at the USGS, we do publish what we call aftershock forecasting. So if you go to the web page of this event, you will see the probabilities of events happening in, a, in the future. And most of the time, uh, it's going to be smaller events. And with time, they're going to decrease in quantity and, and, uh, and size. If there's even aftershocks, there's been one already, but it's, 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 it's a small event again. So we do publish what we know about it. There is a probability for a larger event to be there, but the probability is low. All right. As the son of a school teacher, I can't let you go without asking about a possible learning opportunity right here, especially in a place like Connecticut. This is not something that we t see every day. Yet today, Friday, everyone is talking about this. So what is the takeaway for for someone on the science front, the STEM front, who's who's watching you and is hearing about this earthquake and, and maybe as part of this conversation? So to me, it's the Earth is a dynamic planet. And we think of it as walking on stiff ground and it's solid and it's static. The Earth is always in constant adjustment. And we see larger adjustments and larger earthquakes along the plate boundaries, like in California, for example, or along subduction zones. But earthquakes can happen anytime, and it's just the, the Earth that's, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, reacting to, to the stresses as it's, it's, the different plates are moving. So earthquakes can happen pretty much anywhere, anytime. And there are places where they're, they're more, um, they're, we expect larger earthquakes more often. This is not the case for the, for the East Coast, but earthquakes can happen anywhere. 
And even if there's a low earthquake hazard, it is still possible to have earthquakes. So that's my takeaway. And I think that uh, by learning about them, I know it can be very scary for a lot of people, but, but by learning a little bit more about them, it can be uh, very uh, insightful uh, to people. And the other thing is prepare. Prepare and know what to do. So the default recommendation is drop, cover, and hold on on the sturdy table. Most injuries happen from objects falling over. Um, so do that and then follow recommendations for your, from your local emergency managers. Christine Goulet with the Earthquake Science Center as part of the USGS. Grateful for your time right here on Connecticut's news station. Stay well, my friend. Thank you. You too.